welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another dinosaur piece. Today I'm going to be doing a pastel themed parasaur. Anyways, let's get started. Okay guys, so the first thing that I'm going to do to make our parasaur is I'm going to be making the clay face and then we'll move on to making the clay feet. So with the clay head, I had to do something a little bit different with the tin foil because we have to deal with that long shape of the head. So what I did was I took kind of a bunch of different pieces of tin foil and I glued them together until I had a rough shape for the head. So with the tin foil, I think I got pretty close to the shape that I want, so now I'm going to cover everything with clay. The easiest way to cover something completely in clay is usually to roll out strips of clay and then to kind of wrap it around the object. Then once you have everything completely covered, you can blend all those layers together. So right now the head looks really good shape-wise and everything. The only thing is it's a little bit too bulky and I will have to take some of this clay off, but it's always better to start with more than less. So the first bit of detail that I'm going to be doing is I want to separate the top portion of the head a little bit from the bottom portion, almost making it look like it's an armor piece that's resting on top. So I'm going to be using my tools to kind of refine some lines, dig in a little bit, and just kind of lay everything out. Doing this will also kind of give me a guide to where I want to put the eyes because I don't want them to be too high up on the head. We need to have them low enough to make sense. After that, I think I'm going to be adding the glass eyes, so I'm going to mark out where I want those. I'm going to put some clay balls in place first. Those are what we're going to put the glass eyes on, and then afterwards I'm just going to push my glass eyes into place and just adjust them until they're even. Now with a parasaur, because they are more of a prey animal, the eyes are going to be facing more outwards than forwards. With predator type animals, they look more forward because they're hunting, but with prey type animals, they need a wider range of view to look out for predators. So when you're doing animals, kind of like dinosaurs, birds, and different things like that, just kind of think about what type of diet they have and what type of vision they'll need for that diet. And then after I have the eyes in place, I'm going to start adding the eyelids and focusing on the expression of the eyes. Now with this, I did have to mess around with it for a little bit because when I first laid my eyelids out, I kind of ended up getting an angry expression, and I didn't want that. I wanted it to be kind of cute and bug-eyed, so I did have to adjust that until I got the anger off of the face. I don't know why it started looking angry. I think it's because the top eyelid was slanted down a little bit, but I did eventually get that to go away. And then once I'm done with the eyes, I'm going to start focusing on the mouth and then the nostrils. So I'm going to take a strip of clay to make the upper lip. We're going to lay that out and blend it in. And then I'm going to use my tools to kind of push in some nostril holes. We're also going to use some other tools to refine the shape a little bit. And then we'll probably add some texture here and there. Now after I added the nostrils, that's about when I decided that I needed to start removing clay from the top of the head. It just looked a little bit odd in shape, so I just kind of slowly cut it away until I liked the shape of it. And then after a little bit of scraping away all my extra clay and getting the shape of the head correct, I'm finally ready to just finish it up by adding the textures to everything. For the top of the head, I'm mainly going to be adding line work to make it look like it's something harder and not scaly. And then for the sides of the face, I'm going to be making little scales here and there. And then once I'm happy with the look of the face, we're going to put this in the oven at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 45 to 55 minutes. I might do a little bit longer just because it's such a thick head. Okay, so now we're going to start on the clay feet. I'm going to start on the front ones and then we'll work on the back ones. With the front ones, we're going to be making them look a lot more delicate and it almost looks like she's standing on her tippy toes with these feet. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a lump of clay and I'm going to put it at the end of my wire and then I'm going to take little bent wire pieces for the toes and I'm going to put those in place. I'm going to bake this for probably 15 minutes at 275 just to kind of lock it in and then we can add some claws to the ends of it. Or more of toenails actually because this isn't going to be a predator, it's going to be more of a prey type so we can make these a lot more rounded and cute. So with these feet, the way that I did them, they're going to need an extra bake. Normally I do like two or three, but this time around we're going to do three or four. So after I get the toenails in place, I'm going to bake it for another 15 minutes, and then we can start putting together the bottoms of the feet. So after that's out of the oven for the second time, it's cooled, we can start adding strips of clay to the bottoms of the toes and shaping those and blending them in. And then we're also going to be focusing on the back of the leg. 
Now with the back of the leg, I'm gonna leave it kind of thin around the wrist, but as we go further up, I'm gonna kind of thicken it a bit so we have kind of a curve. And then once we have that done, I'll probably add a texture to this and then we'll throw it in the oven for another probably 25 to 35 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once that's out of the oven and it's cooled again, we can start adding the scales to the front of the feet. So for this, we're just making little balls of clay and we're kind of layering them going up the feet. And then once we have all of our scales in place, we can put this in the oven for one final bake, probably about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then with the back feet, we're basically doing the same steps, it's just slightly shaped differently. So we're going to be having the foot kind of flatter, and it's also going to be kind of thicker. So again, we're basically doing the same steps that we did with the first set of feet. The only thing different is we want these to be kind of thicker because these are probably the main feet used for running. And then once we have our back feet done, we're gonna put those in the oven for their last bake at 275 Fahrenheit for roughly about 45 minutes. And then once all of our clay pieces are done baking, they've cooled to touch, we can start on our painting. Okay guys, so for the painting, we're gonna start with the face first and then we'll move on to painting the feet. So with our parasaur, the main body color is going to be like a baby blue, and then we're going to have a little bit of a hint of purple to it, and then we're going to have some pink stripes going down the back of it. Now I'll probably have the pink stripes on the face, but I won't have them on the feet. Those will probably add a little bit of pink here and there with like dots or something. And then after our first layer of paint has dried, I'm going to adjust it a little bit, kind of brighten it up here and there, and then I'm going to add some scale details, and we're also going to have a stripe of gold going down the back of the parasaur, and I kind of want this to go onto the face as well. So I'm going to use some yellow right now to mark out where that's going to go, but we're going to use a gold paint later once everything else is done. And then the top of the head to make it stand out, we're going to be using a darker, more vibrant blue. I'm gonna mark out where we want those pink stripes to go on the face, and then I'm gonna start adding some highlights and stuff to the front of the face, and just kind of messing around with different tones here and there. Because even though the front of the face is going to be one solid color, we don't want it to look really flat. We wanna give it a little bit more dimension. So we're gonna add a highlight to the front of it and probably darken up the sides. Now I don't want to add a whole lot of dark colors to this piece, I want to keep it very light and vibrant, but we do need to add a little bit of shadowing here and there. So I'm going to add kind of a bit of a dark color in between some cracks, filling in the nostrils and going around the mouth. And then after we add the shadow, I'm going to add some highlights. So I'm going to use some white paint and just kind of define some of the features. I'm gonna let all of this dry and then we're going to peel off the extra paint that's on the eyes and then we can take our gold paint and go over the stripe that we have going down the side of the face. Okay, so I'm really happy with how the face looks so I'm gonna call it done and we're gonna start painting the feet now. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna primer the back of the foot with a white and then we're gonna do the sides of the feet with a blue. That way we can get that very similar fade that we have on the face where the blue fades to a white. And then another way we can add a bit more vibrancy to our blue is we can go around the edge of the scales that are on the front of the feet with a bit of a brighter blue and we can blend that into the colors that we currently have. And then after that I decided that I wanted to paint a few scales on the sides of the feet, so I went over with a bluish green first, I let that dry, and then I filled it in with a pink. That way I could kind of give an outline to the pink. And then after we're done with the blues on the feet, we're going to go over the scales on the front with a yellow. I'm going to be going over with a yellow first, but we are going to be painting these gold, similar to how we did it on the face. And then I thought it would be kind of cute and go well with our colors, and I did the toenails purple. I let all of this dry, and then after my paint is dried, I'm going to take my modeling paint again, and we're going to go over those scales with the gold.
So this was how I painted the front feet, and then I did the back feet in basically the same style, so they look almost identical, again, other than being shaped differently. After I was done with all of the painting, I let everything dry completely, and then I took out some resin, I mixed it up, and I painted it over everything that we originally painted. This is going to have to cure overnight, so right now we can work on our sewing. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do before we start on painting the fabric and sewing and all of that is I need to show you the pattern. So I drew this all out and this is going to be the side of the body. Now the legs are going to be done differently for the front and back. We're going to have the front ones connected to the current body, but the back ones we're going to have connected after everything. So they're going to kind of stick out a bit more. So what we're going to be doing is I'm going to use these to cut out our fabric pieces and then we're going to start painting the sides of the body. Now I'm going to have to do the painting for the fabric in two separate steps. For the first step, we're going to get our fabric nice and wet and we're going to add the first color which is going to be the blue in the main color of the body. After that, we're going to have to let this dry completely, and then we're going to take our pinks and we're going to paint on our stripes. Now some of this will probably get adjusted once we have everything put together, but for now we're mainly going for a blue main body and then the pink stripes. And then after we paint those stripes on, we're going to let it dry again. Again, we need everything completely dried because we don't want to be working with wet fabric. And then what we're going to be doing next is we're going to be sewing that gold stripe that's going to go down the Parasaur's body. So for the stripe, I'm going to be using a fake gold leather. Now I really like this fake leather and I can't wait to use it on other projects because it already has a scale texture on it and I think that's really cool. So how we're going to do this is we're going to take the back of the fabric that we painted and we're going to draw out how we want our stripe to go. We're going to have that all laid out and then we're going to pin our fabrics together and we're going to sew down the lines that we drew. And then after we've sewn around our stripes, we just need to cut off the extra fake leather and our stripes are all nice and set. Now that we've finished decorating the sides of the body, we can start sewing everything together. So we're going to start with the sewing for the front leg. We're going to take the inside part of them and we're going to lay those out on the legs that are on the sides of the body. And we're going to sew down just the front of them. And we're also going to be doing this to the back legs. They're just not connected to the body right now. Now we're going to take that strip of fabric for the belly and we're going to hand sew this in place in between the two layers of the body. And then after that's sewn into place, we're going to use our sewing machine and sew down the rest of the bottom of the body. Okay, so that's all the sewing that we can do right now. The rest of the sewing needs to be done as we put the body together. Okay, so we have everything ready to start putting our body together. We have our clay pieces, we have our fabric, and we even have a simple wire frame to build everything on. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to slide our fabric over our wire frame. So we're going to take the wires for the legs, we're going to run them through the holes for the legs, and then after we have that in place, we can cut them to the right size and we can add our legs to the wire frame. So the wires that we have coming out of the back of the clay legs, we're going to wrap those onto the wires that are on the wire frame. And if you guys are curious, the wire frame itself is made out of a 16 gauge and the wire we're using to wrap everything together is a 20 gauge. So right now we're just going to be working on the front legs first and then after we have everything put together, we're going to add the back legs. So the back legs are going to be the last thing we add. So after we have the legs on the wire frame, we just need to take the fabric for the legs and use our glues and glue it around the base of the clay foot. We're going to let that dry a little bit, then we can sew the back of it closed and stuff it. So after we have the front legs done, we're going to take the head and we're going to add it to the wire frame. So we're just going to glue it onto the wire for the neck, let that dry, and then take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the back of the head.
we're gonna let that dry a little bit as well and then we can start closing up the body and stuffing it. Okay, so the front legs are done, the head is on, and the body is all nice and closed up. Now we're gonna add the back legs. So we're gonna take the fabric for the back legs and we're gonna start sewing those onto the body. I used our original paper pattern and I laid it out on the side of the body and I traced around it. That way I have a guide to where I need to sew. So we're gonna be following these lines that I drew onto the side. We're gonna get that sewn into place and then we can add the clay legs to the wire frame and then we can start gluing the fabric around that and closing and stuffing the legs. Okay, so our body is all nice and put together. Now I'm gonna be doing one final thing and that's adjusting those pink stripes that we have going down the back. I want them to stand out just slightly so I'm gonna be going around them with a white and then I'm gonna kind of adjust the brightness of the pink. And that's how I did a pastel parasaur. I had so much fun with this project and I can't wait to start on more dinosaurs and even more reptiles. I've just been having a lot of fun making scaly creatures and I know I'm going to throw some dragons in there as well. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff and I will see you guys next time. Bye!